studios of K10 Television. This is K10 News at 6. Right now on K10 News at 6, shop till you drop. Texoma Trade Days are back this weekend for anyone looking to do some shopping. Plus, garbage gallery. Local artists take on a dirty job as they try to clean up their downtown. We'll show you where they're turning dumpsters into works of art. And Wild Chase. High-speed chase through one Texoma County ends in a crash. We've got the latest. K10 News at 6 starts right now. Good evening, I'm Kathleen Jordan. Welcome to K10 News at 6. And I'm Tom Crespo. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Denison, where at least one person has been found dead following a house fire. The first responders found the body when they showed up to fight the fire. K10's Alex Housen is live in Denison with the latest. Alex, what can you tell us? Well, Tom, not a lot right now. All I can tell you is that we are at the 1900 block of Lamar Drive in Denison. And around an hour ago in this house, right behind me, fire officials were called for a house fire. Now, they have confirmed that when they got in the house, they found one person dead. Now, at this point, this is not a crime scene, and Denison PD and Denison fire officials are both here investigating the fire. Now, as far as the damage to the house, on the outside, you can see that there's not a lot of exterior damage. But as far as the inside, it is filled with smoke, and it's not a good scene. Reporting live in Denison, Alex Houston, K10 News. A routine traffic stop in one Texoma town leads to a high-speed chase. It all started in Sherman this afternoon when police say they were pulling over a man for a partially covered license plate. K10's Caroline Cunningham joins us live in the studio with the details. Caroline. Kathleen, it all happened in a matter of minutes. Police say the moment the driver was being pulled over, he sped off, leading police on a 10-minute chase through a Texoma neighborhood. This is what Brandy Stansberry walked out to see in her front yard Friday afternoon. Her tires squealing and sirens and then a loud crash and he saw the truck being moved um, from one end of the driveway to the other and then he ran in the house and told me to call 911. Stansberry says she and her husband knew something was wrong when they heard sirens throughout the neighborhood. We ran outside, the driver of the vehicle was gone and the passenger was severely injured um, and cops were here within a minute of the crash happening. Grayson County deputies say Friday afternoon, 27-year-old Jonathan Ramos and 22-year-old Leroy Henderson led them on a chase when they refused to stop after attempting to pull them over for a routine traffic stop. A short pursuit through Sherman when they went in the area of Pacific Street. Two bags were thrown out the passenger side window. In those bags were approximately a pound of marijuana and a substantial amount of crack cocaine. Police say that wasn't the end of it, though. The pursuit continued throughout East Sherman, where eventually the driver crashed in the back end of a parked pickup truck, which just so happened to be Stansberry's truck. Oh my God, what's going on? Ramos ran after ramming into the truck, but deputies eventually caught up with him. Meanwhile, Henderson, his passenger, was airlifted to a Dallas hospital. The passenger apparently was had to be cut out of the vehicle and was taken to a Dallas area hospital by air ambulance, and his condition is unknown at this time. Deputies say they're just glad no one else was hurt and that the pursuit ended peacefully. The vehicle apparently went airborne at some point in time during the pursuit. Since it was in a residential area, it is summertime, kids are out of school. I think we're very lucky that no one was hurt or that the car that he struck was not occupied. Ramos and Henderson both have a lengthy rap sheet. They both could face a slew of charges, including possession of drugs and tampering with evidence. Ramos could also face charges of evading arrest. Reporting live in the studio, Caroline Cunningham, K10 News. City officials in Durant are trying to water down claims that there may be dangerous parasites in your tap. A video posted on Facebook has apparently created quite a stir. Officials say after visiting the home of the man who posted the video and checking the water source, Tests showed no parasites. They say a second round of analysis also confirmed that there's no contamination or bacteria growth. On their Facebook page, the city says based on those tests, they're not issuing an alert. Turning to weather now, a hot week and a hot weekend ahead. A long hot weekend ahead. Mm -hmm. Alan, what's it looking like out there? Well, it certainly is. Uh, if you're headed out this evening, we've got a great event going on in uh, downtown Denison. It's free, uh, part of their concert series. Music on Main now, about 93 degrees when it kicks off for in about an hour to an hour and a half, but dropping into the upper 80s toward the end. Now, sunset this evening is at 8. 
30, 39, almost almost 20 minutes till 9 when it sets. Now, rain chances are showing up for a part of the weekend and off and on through much of next week. I'll have that for you in a few minutes. Thank you, Alan. They say that art is in the eye of the beholder. Well, in Ardmore, it's in the trash. K10 Sarah Williams joins us now live to explain, Sarah. Kathleen, people living here in Ardmore will start to notice creative paintings like this one on dumpsters around town. Smelly, dirty, and ugly. Usually the words associated with trash and dumpsters, but after a dumpster beautification initiative, it's garbage to gold. I think it's beautiful, you know, because you see different things on all the trash cans and they're doing a really, really good job at it. Keep Oklahoma Beautiful awarded a state grant to the Ardmore Beautification Council for a special project to beautify the dumpsters and clean up around downtown. Number one, it kicks in that, that oh, I need to put my trash in the dumpster instead of beside the dumpster. Organizers say local artists volunteered and were selected to show their skills in a public way with a the theme of historic Ardmore. Images of Tucker's Tower, the Mercy Train, Native Americans, and the oil fields are all in the mix. Something artist Joe Thomas was eager to take part in. You usually don't get the opportunity for everyone to enjoy a piece of art. Usually it favors someone this way or that, so this was a really cool deal here. As of now, just five dumpsters are completed, but the group hopes more are on the way. I really hope that they'll do more projects like this that are funded so that maybe the kids can get involved and give them a positive you know, way of expressing themselves. The Ardmore Beautification Council now says they plan on submitting the project for an Environmental Excellence Award. I think it's really great that somebody is taking their talent and their time to do something to beautify the community. For a full list of the local artists involved, you can visit our website, k10.com, as well as our Facebook page. Live in Ardmore, Sarah Williams, K10 News. If you're looking to do some shopping this weekend, you may want to check out Texoma Trade Days. It's back this weekend at the Mayor Arena at Loy Lake Park. More than 80 vendors have set up shop selling everything from arts and crafts to coffee and antiques. There will also be a kid zone for your younger ones. It's already wrapped up for today, but they'll be open tomorrow from 9 in the morning until 5. And then on Sunday, it will be 10 in the morning until 4. Organizers say the annual event is great for the community. It's awesome. We just need the community to come out here and support us and, the, and these awesome vendors. Uh, shop local and support your uh, local vendors and local businesses. They're offering free parking and there is no fee to get in. And if shopping isn't your thing, a day in the park listening to some free entertainment just might be. The City of Ada and Happy Land Music Alliance are hosting a Music in the Park event on Sunday. It'll feature pop singer Zach Garcia. Now, the event will kick off at 6 o'clock and last until about 8.30 at Wintersmith Park, south of the Lodge. Food and drinks will be available for purchase, and you can bring your favorite blanket or lawn chairs. And to find out more about the event, you can just go to our website, k10.com. Still ahead at 6, kids from all over cooled off today in a local pool. We'll show you why today's lessons are so important. Plus, the Dallas Mavericks made an interesting pick in last night's NBA draft. We'll hear from head coach Rick Carlisle and what he thinks about it later in sports. And Alan's back with your full weekend forecast. K10 News at 6 returns. Local kids dove into a global swim lesson today. We'll show you what they learned and why their coaches say it was so important. That and more. So ahead. You're watching K10 News at 6 with Tom Crespo, Kathleen Jordan, Ashley Prendergast with sports, and Chief Meteorologist Alan Mitchell with the weather. And after another very hot summer day for us, some changes are on the way. We've been talking about it all week. You know, some rain chances were going up as well as a possibility of at least a little bit cooler weather. As a matter of fact, we may finally get back to normal after a couple weeks of being well above normal temperature wise. There's a live shot right now. Pretty good looking evening as we look out over Lake Texoma. I'll show you the lake conditions here in just a moment. Temperature wise, 96 degrees this afternoon. Now, had it been a normal day for us, only about 89, but uh, record on this day, 106 at 
in 1933. 74 in the morning, close to 90 by the noon hour on Saturday and mid 90s again tomorrow afternoon. Humidity levels aren't extremely high, but they're high enough that we can add another another several degrees onto well, what the actual air temperature is. Heat index values will be around 100 to 102 tomorrow afternoon. Lake elevation continues to drop about three and a half feet above normal right now. We're down about uh, two inches in the last 24 hour period. Floodgates are open 9 million gallons a minute coming out of the lake and uh, that trend should continue as well. Showing 91 degrees at 6 p.m. from McAllister, Toka, Ada, Paul's Valley, Ardmore, you're at 90 to 94 in Sherman and Denison. 89 from Oak City to 94 down south around Dallas. High pressure still in control. It's what we've had uh, off and on for the better part of two weeks now. It has kept us uh, pretty much in a uh, hot summer-like weather pattern. The signs, though, are still there that uh, over the weekend it will begin to transition back toward the west, and that will allow a cool front to drop into the area uh, perhaps by Sunday evening into the Red River region. And then a couple upper-level disturbances coming across our region next week, too, will give uh, some rain chances uh, off and on through much of the week by uh, Sunday night or rather Saturday night, Sunday morning storms in Kansas and perhaps far northern Oklahoma will develop. And then on Sunday uh, afternoon and evening, mainly north of I-40, but by later Sunday night, some of that should begin to work southward toward the Red River, at least a, a narrow band there of showers and a few storms. So the weekend dry, but again, Sunday night, fairly late, a few storms, certainly a possibility into Monday morning across our Texoma region. The upper level wind flow again shows this big ridge of high pressure, our summer like weather pattern breaking down, moving off to the west. So that's where all the really hot uh, summertime temperatures will be with the upper level winds out of the north and northwest. That'll help to drive that front through once again. This is through Thursday and Friday of next week before it starts to show signs maybe of building back in. But I would think anyway, at least for part of the holiday weekend, 4th of July weekend, maybe Saturday time frame, Friday, Saturday, some storminess would be with us by tomorrow evening still in the mid 80s so a very warm evening shaping up once again mid 90s saturday sunday monday and then by uh, next week we start to see rain chances particularly on uh, tuesday and then again on friday and as I mentioned, some of that will probably linger even into our holiday weekend on Saturday. So I'm not looking for a washout on the 4th of July weekend, but some storminess off and on through the period. And temperatures finally getting back into the 80s where they should be. That's nice for That's this time of very year. Very nice. Good. Nice cold front coming through. <laughs> Thanks, Ella. Well, still to come on K10 News at 6, as athletes gear up for the 2016 Rio Olympics, one of Denison's own will compete for a chance to represent the U.S. We'll take a look later in sports. Plus, more than 100 kids took part in a worldwide swimming lesson today. We'll take you there. Hundreds of kids in our area now know how to swim a little bit better thanks to the world's largest swimming lesson. It's a global swim lesson that takes place in 500 locations in 23 countries that teaches children how to swim, safety exercises, and even how to help someone else who may be drowning. K10's Rebecca Lex is live in the studio with the story. Rebecca. Kathleen, experts say because of the heat, more people are taking advantage of the pools and area lakes. Today, 130 children jumped into the pool at Waterloo, not only because of the heat, but to learn about water safety. I had a lot of fun. Like, the, going swimming in the summer is my best thing ever. Swim coaches and lifeguards around the globe, including here in Denison, are offering swim lessons to help save lives. Swim lessons save lives. Um, children like under the age of 14 drowning is actually the number two cause of death in the United States number two I mean it's just amazing the world's largest swimming lesson began six years ago teaching kids about water safety and helping prevent childhood drowning because it's so hot and it is summertime coaches say more drownings and near drowning accidents take place in the U.S. during the month of June than any other month of the year Friday, lifeguards taught children how to give CPR and how to rescue a person with a flotation device who might be drowning. You just throw it out to the person and you have to lean down low so um, it won't come away from you. Children were also taught to never go alone to the lake or a pool. And I learned if you go swim at a lake, make sure you have someone by you that actually can swim. One mom says she brought her kids to the lesson because she never learned how to swim. I'm hoping that my kids can learn how to swim 
and uh, maybe be a little better than me. And another says she's thankful for the lesson because she plans to spend time at Lake Texoma this summer and wants her child to feel safe in the water. We just moved up here and we're close to the lake and so with so much water being around, you know, I just want them to teach them safety and everything. If you'd like to learn more about water safety and how to help reduce the risk of drowning, visit our website at k10.com. Reporting live in the studio, Rebecca Lex, K10 News. All right, Ashley, so what are we hearing about the MAPS pick last night? Well, we're hearing a lot of different things. Some people like it, some people don't like it. So we're just going to hear straight from the horse's mouth. Rick Carlisle, head coach, he's talking about it. That's next in sports. Now sports with Ashley Prendergast. Deep into yesterday's NBA draft, the 46 picked to be exact. The Dallas Mavericks se selected A.J. Hammonds, a selection that puzzled some Mavericks fans. Hammonds is a seven-footer for a Purdue Boilermaker who averaged 15 points per game and 8.2 boards per game during his senior campaign. And apparently, there is no expectation he will make the Mavs roster this season. Dallas expects significant production from Hammonds, though, just not straight out of the gate. Donnie Nielsen, president of basketball operations, said before the selection that this pick will require some patience from fans. Head coach Rick Carlisle was pleased overall with the pick. We really like him. Uh, we like his talent. We feel he is uh, definitely a first-round talent. Uh, there were a lot of weird things happening in this draft. Some guys moved into the first round unexpectedly, and some guys uh, really slid. Uh, we were fortunate that he slid. Uh, he's a skilled big man who can score in the post, who is a, uh, you know, one rebound about every three minutes, which is a very good number. Denison's own Lindsay Looney will compete in the Rio Olympic trials for swimming this coming week. Looney qualified for the trials in the 400 IM and the 200 fly. At just 14 years old, this will be Looney's first opportunity to compete for a spot with Team USA. She already made a splash at UIL State, winning a gold and silver medals in her two events. The Olympics begin August 5th, and all of the action will be right here on K10. Tonight, the Rangers host the Red Sox in the first of a three-game set at Globe Life Park. The Sox have a tough task on their hands. They have to battle the hottest team in baseball right now. Texas is the top team in the American League as well. And on a 10-game lead in the West, they will have to overcome a small setback, though, in a span of a week. You Darvish, Colby Lewis, and Derek Holland have all been sent to the DL. So the rotation is experiencing a mid-season shakeup right now. We see how that pans out with Nick Martinez on the bump tonight. First pitch at 7.05. Oklahoma State taking on Arizona for a spot in the finals in the College World Series. Pokes, big challenge ahead, top the first, no score. J.J. Machavig, RBI single to left field. Zach Gibbons will score. Arizona taking a 1-0 lead early in the game. The Wildcats like that. Bottom of the second, Pokes down three. Nathan Bannister, K's Dustin Williams swinging to end the inning. OSU tries to battle back but loses. 9-3, the final from Omaha, Arizona advancing to the finals. Now, don't run with your food, but how about running dressed as food? Between innings at the Giants-Pirates game last night, the great pierogi race took place. Six pierogies, one goal, reach the babushka. Okay, that part's not exactly true, but fun fact, the pierogies do travel once a year to Milwaukee to take on the Brewers racing brat. So all I can say is I think it's dinner time. I'm a little hungry now. I could do some pierogies. What are those things anyway? Do you know? Pierogies are like... Uh, they're the Polish version of empanadas. Okay. Chef Ashley. There you go. <laughs> I also do have a cooking segment, if you didn't know. Culinary <laughs> lessons nice with Ashley. <laughs> Stick around. We'll be right back. All right, Alan, we made it to Friday. Yeah, we did, and it uh, looks like a pretty good weekend for us. Very summer-like. A few storms possible uh, across the Red River counties, particularly by Sunday night. And then better chances of rain arrive uh, off and on next week. And even some cooler weather, too. Problem is part of that rain could linger into the first start of the July 4th weekend. All right, thanks, Alan. What's going to do for us? Thanks for watching. Have a great night.